family welcome back to another video um don't forget to like and subscribe before we get into this one this week we are doing these lush cake hearts um such a big trend at the minute for the cake hearts especially this sort of multicolored look um i love the way this set came together and really blended all the colors nicely so i'm going to go through all the tools you need everything that you need to make these and all the techniques and the way i do them not everybody does them this way everybody does it different this is my way i like my way let's see so let's get into it so first we're going to start out with our mold um i am going to show you these amazing amazing new spatula set that i got oh my god i'm in love with them they're sprinkle themed I, I will link them down below for you if you want to get yourself a set you get the big one the little one with the i don't know what you call it the solid side and the, the scooped side and then a standard sort of spatula and then you get a mini version of that one as well they're brilliant for mixing up small amounts and then you get this one which is really good if you're using a tall glass or if you're making something like a salted caramel and obviously the standard pastry brush which really comes in and i get through so many spatulas i don't know about anybody else but these seem to be faring quite well so far so we're going to start out with our cake um our cakesicle mold it's not even a cakes color is it it's a cake heart dudes come on what's wrong with me today um, I do normally go through the beginning of my videos and explain like about taking your jewellery off and stuff. I am going to point out because someone's going to say it. You've got your watch on. I only made these for this video. I didn't make these to sell um, like I do normally. So we've got our mould that we have cleaned out with some clear alcohol. These are the colours we're using and I've got some glass bowls to separate my colours out into as well. These bowls have been warmed through as well and I do also um, melt my chocolate in a double boiler. Okay so we're going to colour the chocolate first using the colour mill colours. I'll link those below for you as well. They are my favourite ones for chocolate and you can also use them in buttercreams, you can use them in fondant so they do lend themselves to everything but um, the fact that you can use them in chocolate because, I don't know if you're aware, but you can't use all gel colours in chocolate. You have to have a fat dispersible one. So I'm using my mini spatulas here. They're so cute. Um, to mix the colours up. So we have mixed the royal blue and the teal. And then the third colour is the white. So I've used a double boiler, so that's where you use it. You melt the chocolate in a saucepan um with a metal or a glass bowl suspended over the saucepan not touching the water and just simmer the water do not boil that water okay and i'm going to use these brushes they're the flat style brushes as you can see i'm pointing it out there for you in, in case you don't notice that um because they sort of give the right kind of shape if you use the rounded standard round brush um the, the bristles are a bit long these are more stubby Okay, so we're just making little blobs. Like, it's not technical, guys. It's really not. Blobs. They're blobs. They are blobs of chocolate. It doesn't matter if they start to set up. Um, it won't affect the rest of it. They probably will start to set up. Um, so we're just sort of making a random pattern with the two different colours. And then the third colour will be our base colour, so our white. Obviously, if you want to do them differently, then your base colour would be the largest amount that you would keep back and then do that last. And then I also used all three colours to obviously blend them in the set. OK, so wiping a little bit away there. Like I say, these are only for my, um, they were for my husband. So they, they didn't matter about fingers. Normally, I would be far more careful. <laughs> so anyway um back to what we were doing so yeah i do use a double boiler to melt my chocolate you can melt it in a microwave um that's perfectly fine i do use candy melts for most of these projects i've been called up before oh, you know why do you use candy melts why don't you use real chocolate rah, 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 rah. i don't like it i don't like tempering it and i'm not gonna make out like oh candy melts are so much better or I just prefer this or I use that or I do this or what I do is better. What works for me and my business and the way I work are candy melts. So I order them in bulk. Um, they are sometimes a little bit hard to get hold of at the minute in the UK because of the double whammy of COVID and um, Brexit. But managing to get hold of them okay enough that I don't need to switch to normal white chocolate. The problem with normal white chocolate is... You've got to buy a really good quality one and it is expensive, which added, adds either to the price you've got to then pass on to your customer or 
if you're selling like me or um the it eats into your profits so and I I, lo- I like the flavour of candy melts. I'm not going to lie. I love the vanilla flavour versus the flavour of white chocolate. And the problem with white chocolate is it's quite yellow. Even the really good quality ones, which are paler, are still quite yellow. So you've got to deal with those yellow tones when you come to colouring it. And things like blues, that blue that you've got up there that I've just used, that would not be that true blue. It would have green tones in it and you'd have to combat those with a bit of violet or something like that. So... Um, if you've watched my videos before, you'll know that I always use a clear acrylic ball tool for smooshing my chocolate around my mould. You can use the metal one, as I just showed you. Sorry, I was rambling. I did this last week as well. I'm really sorry. And then a warm spatula to scoop across the top. I keep all of my tools warm. I do. I leave my spatulas in a bit of hot water and then I wipe them before. So there's no water going into the chocolate because obviously that will cause it to seize. Um, and then I've just flipped my ball tool around look, to use the different colours. And then I'll swap it out for the metal one when I do the white. And that will blend our set nicely together because then we've got the three of the pattern and the three in the three colours that we're using in those patterned ones. So it's all about thinking about how your set's going to come together. And sometimes that's the hardest part. So you can obviously... So now we've done those, we're going to pop them in the fridge for five minutes. And then we're now back with that and we're going to put our white in we do need those spotty bits just to set up a little bit first um, because otherwise you'll smoosh them around and you'll create more of a marbled look than you will the spotty look um, if you do want the marbled look see some of my other videos and I have got a marbling one coming up on Wednesday this week as well so keep an eye out for that so I did start with the spatula with the white but I decided I didn't like that sacked it off and switch to my small ball tool because I don't want to rattle that chocolate around the mold too much I don't want to disturb those spots and you've got to make sure that your chocolate is not too hot either um around 30 degrees centigrade I'm sorry guys I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit um for pouring it in so that it's not too hot and then we're just smooshing it around I don't I don't there isn't a technical word spreading moving smooshing we're smooshing it guys so we're smooshing it around the mould to sit that white above those spots and then when we turn them out we'll get the nice spotty look and we're going to do all three of those and then we are going to pop it back in the fridge for another five to ten minutes. I only leave my chocolate in the fridge for as long as it takes to set. I don't leave it in there for any longer because you'll cause it to sweat, especially if you live in a warmer climate or a humid climate. You'll get a lot of sweating going on and you don't both with your products on yourself. Ew. Um, so you don't want to cause too much sweating on them. And if you do get sweating, leave them to come to room temperature before you do anything with them. So now we're making the filling. I've got some cake crumbs here that I've whizzed up in the food processor. Um, they were some cupcakes that I just whizzed up. And this is a chocolate ganache because this is going to be a chocolate fudge filling. And I'm going to add a bit of orange oil into this because it's going to be a chocolate orange filling. So here it is. I've got one from Sainsbury's. This is an oil based one. So it goes really nicely into a ganache. A water based wouldn't work very well and it. it'll cause it to split. And do you know what? These smell amazing. They really, really smell good. Um, and just by adding that flavouring into the chocolate, sometimes I add a mint into it and you get a nice mint chocolate. I'm going to do a mint chocolate um, video later in the week. On the Wednesday, the ones that we'll do for the marbling, they're mint chocolate. I actually put chocolate chips inside them and oh my God, they were amazing. Amazing. So we're adding our ganache. So this is the really important bit. Um, I am using gloves purely for a messy factor. I don't use gloves in my work because it's not actually as hygienic as people think it is. And it's actually against advice by the Environmental Health Department here in the UK. So um, this is the point at which you need to be really careful because here it's really tempting to add more ganache or buttercream or whatever you're using to mix it. Don't. Push that crumb into it. You don't want it to be too greasy. And if you add more in at that stage, it will be greasy. And it won't be very nice to eat. You see how that came together and it didn't look like it was going to. It's all come together now and it's not greasy. It's the perfect consistency. It should feel like Play-Doh. Everybody knows what Play-Doh feels like. It should be quite firm. But you can see here, look, no grease. Just a nice 
ball of cake. So we're going to add that into our moulds now and we're making sure we're not filling it too high. Um, we want to leave one to two millimetres above it so that you can fit in your chocolate backs and you can get a really nice seal on there. We don't want to, um, I mean, the backs, they don't matter too much if they're a little bit messy, in my opinion. Um, other people might want to, you know, really go to town and make sure that they're super perfect. That's your prerogative. I think it's a waste. No one's going to look at it. No one cares. No one turns it over and inspects it. No one's shoving it in their mouth upside down. Um, I'm not saying that your backs are going to be horrendous, but they don't need to be really, really neat like the fronts do. But I do always make sure I've got one to two millimetres spare to make sure that I get a nice thick layer of chocolate. And we're not skimping out on the chocolate. Some people also like to dump their spare chocolate out when they fill the moulds with the chocolate. I don't do that because I like a thick layer. Again, like I said to you at the beginning, this is my way. This is how I like to do them. And you are welcome to use my way and adapt it to for how you work or what you like or what you like to eat or what your customers like to eat and your customer base where you are. That's fine. But this is the way I do it. So we're filling all these moulds up now. And um, you can see I'm being fairly gentle. You don't have to be quite as gentle with these ones as you do with the cake sickles. If you've watched my other cake sickle videos, you'll know you've got to be so careful around that stick. That stick is the devil. Um, you don't have to be quite so careful with these. And the heel of your hand is really useful with these ones because of the shape of the mould. To sort of work it in without pushing too hard because you will crack it. Um, they, they, you know, they're not going to stand up to everything that you do to them. They are, at the end of the day, it's just chocolate and cake. So we're pushing it in nice and neat, making sure we get it into all of the crevices. And then um, we will pop our chocolate on the back. And I did match the colour of the chocolate up for each one. You don't have to. Um, I have done them where they've been different before and it doesn't make that much difference. And you can see here, you can see that little gap and that's our little reservoir for our chocolate that's going to go in in a minute. And then we'll make it all nice and pretty and then we will decorate. So um, obviously in terms of fillings, I mostly use um, cake. So um, if I'm making cupcakes, I'll make a few extra and I'll use those to whiz up in the food processor. I do always use a food processor. Um, you can do it by hand. You'll get a thick, a much thicker crumb if you do it by hand. I like the fine crumb that I get from the food processor. Or you can use your stand mixer. That works especially well if they're still warm. Um, or you could bake a normal cake. It doesn't have to be cupcakes. Um, obviously, it's a bit wasteful to use the cases and such. But if I'm already baking a batch of cupcakes, I may as well just make a slightly larger batch and make the extras. Like I say, I did match up the colours on the backs. But you don't have to. If you haven't got some of the coloured chocolate left, just use the white. It won't matter that much. You won't be able to see it from the front, I promise. I've done it before with different colour. Um, but yeah, you can use things like brownies. If you use a brownie, you won't need, you would need to cut the edges off to take away the, the thick crust, but you won't need anything to bind it together. It'll come together really well because it's just a chewy, quite chewy. Um, or you can do a ganache filling or you can make gaps on the inside and you can put a salted caramel. I've done a salted caramel before or Biscoff. If you've got Biscoff where you are, that's quite big here in the UK. Um, and you can put a Biscoff filling in there. That's really nice. That goes lovely with a vanilla or a salted caramel if you've got a sweet tooth. Um, or you can do a mousse where you, you would set the mousse in the mould first. You wouldn't probably do it inside the chocolate. And then you would pour the chocolate on after. But you would lose some of the definition of the geometric effect if you did a mousse. But there are loads of fillings you can experiment with. And, you know, if you do experiment with different fillings, please let me know. Um, I'll pop all of my social social pages on the description as well, as well as a link to all of the products I've used here as well. So if you need anything that you don't have, you can go get it. Um, so we're popping them out of the moulds now. And while you don't have to be as careful as you do with the cakesicles, if you've watched those videos, you do still need to be fairly careful. So I always pull from the sides to loosen them slightly. You'll sort of hear it pull and crack and loosen away. And then I push from underneath from the pointed end of the cake heart 
up towards, you see there, push from the bottom and pull. Try not to touch the outer edge, the top edge too much because you'll lose that beautiful shine. Your, your hands will immediately start to melt the chocolate. So I try not to handle the tops too much so that we keep the shine and we don't leave any finger marks on them. So there is our beautiful set and now we're going to crack on with decorating them. So I'm going to do a little splatter. I call it a splatter. I don't know what anyone else might call it. This is the luster dust I've got in here and I'm just mixing it with some rejuvenator fluid. I like to make my own paints. I don't like to buy ready-made paint um, because I like to have control over the consistency. When I'm doing a splatter like this, I do mix it thicker than if I was painting. And I'm using a zero brush here as well, which I'll also link below for you and splattering it on. Um, I'll link the luster dust and the rejuvenator down below for you um, so that you can you can get everything you need. I do buy the larger rejuvenator personally because the teeny tiny ones last about five minutes. They don't go very far at all. And yet the, the larger one is, uh, I think it's five or ten times the size and it's only twice the price. So it makes much more fiscal sense. You don't get to use that word very often in uh, everyday conversation, do you? So I'm splattering all of them. Obviously, you could just do the solid colour ones across the top there. You could just do the splatter on those. I wanted the splatter on all of them. I love a, I love a cake to colour a um, cake heart with a bit of splatter on it. I don't know what it is. It just goes really, really nicely with it. So that's what I did. I did all, all six of them. And the smell off these was lovely as well. They smelled so, so good. Um, I will link an orange oil for you as well, actually, um, if you want to do some orange. And I'll also link a mint one, just in case you want to have a go at the mint. Um, so I used a mix by Happy Sprinkles. Um, they're one of my favourite brands. And I'm using a disposable piping bag with some chocolate in it here to attach the sprinkles. I did do all three at once. If you're a beginner or you've not been doing this very long, I would advise doing one at a time because the chocolate will dry really, really quickly. So if you need a little bit more time to do things and to apply your sprinkles, then definitely do one at a time. I do do one at a time sometimes. I obviously decided to take the risk today and just do all three at once. I was feeling rebellious. So um, sometimes I like to empty the pot into another bowl so that I can pick out the bits I need. I didn't do that today. I don't know why. I'm stupid. Um, so I did have to pick out the larger pieces and then sprinkle the smaller. It is a lot easier if you just put them in a bowl and not be stupid like I am. And then you can pick out the larger bits. And sometimes there might be bits in a sprinkle mix that you don't want, like the colour. Maybe the colours aren't all quite right and you want to pick out some of the pieces. So there is a finished cake heart. I adored this set and I think just by swapping up the colours you could really you know, make something different every time just by swapping out the colours. So I really hope you enjoyed it. If you've got any questions, please pop them below. Don't forget to like and subscribe because I am only a small page and it really does help. And then you'll get notifications for every time I drop a new video. So thank you for watching and good night.